Medicaid trust. So Don was talking about doing a revocable trust. The, the, the revocable trusts are pretty similar state to state. I would say it's more difficult to get one of these trusts through in New Jersey, but New York is also getting very difficult. So the only real difference I can tell you is that a lot of clients, when they do these trusts, like the idea that they can retain the income from the asset, even if it isn't a lot. In New York, you can do that because when you die, there's no estate recovery against that income interest. But in New Jersey, there is. So you don't see that many income only trust in New Jersey. Um, but, you know, I think I think there there's a, a lot of commonality between these trusts. There's always a five year look back. You're giving up a lot of control over the asset. And a lot of clients don't really want to do that. Um, but but I, I don't think there's a big difference state to state with respect to these trusts. It's probably an equal draw. Uh, caregiver agreements. This is if you know you have a family member who wants to take care of you and in, instead of uh, making a big gift, you want to compensate them and move some of your assets out of your, your name because it's not a gift, it's compensation. You can do this in New York, it's not easy to do. You have to check a lot of boxes off to accomplish it. You can't pay it in a lump sum. It's I found it very tedious to do it. I did it for a couple of clients. And I don't think it works that great because the care rate you can charge is, you know, a caregiver rate per hour. And I, I just don't think it works that well. In New Jersey, I don't I've never tried it. Does it work, guys? It uh we used to use it a lot, but then the courts a few of the cases were appealed and there's been a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of requirements, as you're saying, uh, in order for a, um, a, a, you know, a, a caregiver mm -hmm. agreement with a, with an adult child to be found bona fide by the courts. So yeah, it would work, but uh, very, to, it's very complicated and the, and the children have to be prepared to, you know, disclose their own assets to show, yeah. you know, that they're paying the appropriate taxes on, on the money that they receive and all. So uh, it's difficult. Yeah. All right. I mean, I we barely do it. So primary residence protection, we both have a similar exempt cap of a little over a million dollars, which is significant. If someone goes into a nursing home in New York and they leave their home, they can sign a very simple document that says that I intend to return home. It's a subjective test. And if they do that, the residence is exempt. Um, in New Jersey, that doesn't work. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if you put the house up for sale and you show that you're actively trying to sell it, then it is exempt. And then it's not a problem. Once it's sold, you kind of start from scratch. You're over-resourced. Do something with it. Do some other planning. In New York, um, you can do an intent return home when the property is sold. Sometimes there might already be a lien on the property if you've been on Medicaid for a while. So you're kind of backpedaling. You got to pay the lien off and then you got to do other planning. But it's certainly better than not being eligible and paying the private rate. Right. So I think their states are kind of equal in that regard. Um, no, we never have a lien. There's never a lien placed on the home. Yeah, become, so you, you know, you they pay for, Medicaid will pay for the stay in the nursing home while you're trying to sell the home. And then once you sell it, yeah, you become ineligible, but there's no lien on the proceeds. You just have to spend it down or do one of these strategies in order to get rid of it. But uh, they have, they've only placed liens on people's uh, assets uh, after death. Okay, I mean, I, I feel like- New Jersey, I think this one, New Jersey wins, finally. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you do, I do, because I feel like we don't always have a lien, but it can be placed on the home. Mm -hmm. Unless that you can show that it's medically possible for the person to come home, it's very hard 
to do that. It's really a subjective, almost a fictional test. So not as good as to New Jersey, I, I would admit. Now, now New Jersey clearly wins the meet the state of state tax test. And we're gonna go a little way or away from elder law into general state planning. And New York has a 6.58 million. I know it's a lot, but we still have a, a state debt tax with a pretty substantial amount of tax payable if you're slightly over that amount. And New Jersey doesn't have an estate tax at all anymore, right? Oh, it's the only estate tax you have as a New Jersey resident is the federal estate tax, and that's over 12 million per person. Right. So if you're lucky enough to have that much money, I don't know why you're on this webinar. <laughs> That's right. We have no estate tax anymore, but we do have an inheritance tax uh, for people outside the immediate family. As as an as an outsider doing some work in New Jersey, I think the inheritance tax is absolutely a brilliant tax because it really only goes after people who are not truly immediate family. So so no elderly client is going to gift all their assets out of their name to avoid a 15% tax to benefit their cousins or nephews or siblings um, because they're just not going to do that. And, they, and they'd rather just keep all their money and, unless they have an elder law problem, right? Yes. So I think the inheritance tax, we don't have it in New York. That's a positive, but I don't think it's such a terrible tax. And it doesn't go after most people. So I think New Jersey wins on the estate inheritance tax column. The last thing that I'm giving a lot of nods to New Jersey here, the probate process is so incredibly consumer friendly in New Jersey and lengthy involved in New York. My partner, Daisy Echeverria, she's very good, Daisy, yay. She, all she does is probate work. And, and every case is like involved because of the paperwork and the backlog and, and the, the, just the whole process. Whereas okay. when I started doing work in New Jersey, I mean, I went to the Bergen County Circuits Courts five, six years ago. I walked in and they were like, why are you here? Where's your client? You don't need to be here. And she told me to sit down in the lobby area. I'm sitting in the lobby, there's magazines there. They have coffee. I'm like, when you go to New York County Surrogate Court, it's a beautiful building. And they're like, what do you want? You know? So it's, probate process is very good in New Jersey. Come on, tell, tell the truth. Not only do you not get coffee, you get yelled at too. So. Sometimes you get yelled at. Yeah, and sometimes it's justified, but sometimes it's not. But I'm just thinking like, these are, these are a lot of the differences between the states. Um, I, I really can't give, I used to always say New Jersey had the worst laws and New York was much better, but I think it's pretty even now across the board. Yeah. I don't think it's a preference. I just think of it as a, you have a big retirement account, you have a long-term care problem. That's the only time I would tell you to move to New York. That's yeah. it. Makes yeah, sense. we definitely count the IRAs and the 401ks for everybody's IRA or 401k. And you don't. So it's a big advantage. Anyway, so if anyone has any questions or. Um, no, not in the chat box. I think uh, everybody's listening well and try to absorb everything. Um, unless anyone has any questions, um, here are our information. Um, and if you want to email us. Here's the website. If you want to email Matt or Don or I, feel free and we'll be happy to help you out uh, with any questions you have. Um, so does anyone have any questions? If you have any particular questions, you can unmute yourself and, and um, fire away. I don't see anything. I guess not. All right. So well, does the IRA payout have to be paid monthly or can it be paid in one? Oh. So Bob. 
Is it New York? Is it a New York question or a New Jersey question? I guess it will be a New York question because it's talking yeah. about the payout. Yeah. yeah. So the, the answer is it's a good question. It's got to be, it can be, it can be done one lump sum per year. What you have to do is make sure you take your required distribution. If you take it, we, we do like it done monthly because then we can budget it as a monthly income spend down. But if some IRAs won't do that, they'll just do one payment per year. That's also okay. Uh, if you miss a required distribution, it can screw up your entire Medicaid plan and now you have accountable resource. So we want it done monthly, but we warn people, as long as it's done once a year, you'll still be eligible. Good question. Okay, good. All right, Bob, I think uh, Matt answered your question. Anybody else? All right, people wanna have any of the- uh, I think it's a lot of information. It's a lot to absorb. We will send out the, um, the, the, the presentation slide to your email if you um or to you if you like just send us an email requesting it um and then we will forward it to you so for your use if needed um otherwise i guess we will conclude the uh webinar today and thank you everyone to be here and thanks Don. thank you matt to spend your time with everyone and hope this kind of gives a bit of information as to your planning for the family, and uh, if any other questions, feel free to reach us. Thanks, Don All and right, Jen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Okay. Thanks.